we deal with the the secret of God concerning being a glory carrier. Glory carrying is a reward for honor. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about of knowing how to move in the grace of honor full time. Number one, you always have to know who God does not want you ever to get angry at. You can never move in honor if you don't understand this. You have to know who God never wants you to get angry at. Honor is also knowing who God never wants you to criticize. See, the anointing of honor is, is the Father magnifying to you where not to trespass. We're not to trespass in your heart. We're not to trespass in your thoughts. Remember what Joseph said to Potiphar's wife. How could I commit this great wickedness and sin against God? Look, look what he's saying. How can I create, do this great wickedness and sin against God? See, what he's saying is, honor will not let me trespass concerning this. So honor, the anointing of honor is where the father shows you where your mind should never go. What your heart should never speak. Remember the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your heart is speaking before it gets to the mouth. Your mouth just utters the conversation that the heart was having. Now, I can deal with something called satanic abundance. Satanic abundance is where your heart is carrying the overflow, the wealth of wickedness. Satanic abundance is dangerous because if you let your heart have the abundance of wrong things, you will lack God giving you the right things. That's why the word of God say poverty and shame shall be to him that refutes instruction in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. Because that person has the overflow of wrong things in them, the wealth of wrong things. So they never get the wealth of right things to manifest for them on the outside. Every person in poverty outwardly are wealthy inwardly. Think about that. People that are in poverty outwardly are rich inwardly. They're wealthy inwardly. But the wealth and the abundance that they have within them is strife, bitterness, toxic emotions, and toxic thoughts. So they have an overflow operating in the wrong direction. So even people that lack on the outside have abundance on the inside. And the abundance on the inside is keeping them from the abundance that God wants to give them on the outside because that abundance of tradition, the abundance of distraction. Honor shows you who never to be angry at. Honor shows you who never to disrespect. Honor shows you who never to rob. Think about that. Honor shows you who never to rob. Who you are to never rob. Honor shows you who to not withhold yourself from, your possessions from. If you look at Proverbs, it talks about withhold not good from whom it is due. Withhold not good from whom it is due. You know what that word is saying there? It's saying that there are some people that are worthy. There is a person in the earth that's worthy of your money. They're worthy of what you have. They're worthy of your time, your energy. They're worthy of your finances. It says withhold not good from whom it is due, which shows you that for some people, they're actually a collector of your worship unto God. They're a collector. You know, we talk about a bill collector. A prophet is a worship collector. I come to collect your worship. 
I come to collect your honor. I come to collect your attentiveness. Collect your receptivity. Collect your faith. Bible said that you believe in me, so shall you prosper. A worship collector. Honor reveals to you who never to argue with. Our honor shows you who to never argue with. There are certain people you're never supposed to argue with them. You're never supposed to get into a verbal exchange of disagreement with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honor reveals to you where to destroy arguments. Hallelujah. Those are wisdom doors right there. Honor shows you where to destroy arguments. Honor shows you where to invest your pleasure. Everybody has the abilities of pleasures in them. But honor shows you where to invest. It shows you the soul that can receive your soul. I'm going to say this again. Honor reveals the soul that can receive your soul. Meaning the creativity of your mind, your will, your emotions. The anointing of your mind, your will, your emotions. The, the wisdom of your mind. The love that operates in your mind. It reveals the soul that can receive your soul. Honor reveals to you who never to criticize. See, honor protects you from criticism. It shows you who never to betray. Honor will deliver you from hidden betrayal. Honor shows you who you're never supposed to turn your back on. Honor reveals to you who you're never supposed to slander. Honor is the self-restraint of God on a person. The self-restraint. A restraining order on a chosen vessel. If you're taking notes, write it down. Honor is the restraining order on a chosen vessel. So as a restraining order, that's what God restrains you from going places mentally. He restrains you from saying things verbally. He restrains you. And saints, dishonor is a thought the same way honor is a thought. If you look at it, what happens when you're dishonorable? You think something that your mind was never supposed to think. Why do children dishonor their parents? Oh, oh, the first time they start to think, my parent is stopping me from enjoying myself. The minute they become disrespectful. Because dishonor starts in the brain. It's a, it's a mind thing. It's a mind thing. Dishonor starts in the brain. Honor starts in the brain. Dis, if you take a note, write this down. Dishonor is the thoughts that you refuse to cast down. Dishonor is the thoughts that you refuse to cast down. If you take a note, write that down. Dishonor is the thoughts that you refuse to cast down. Because these thoughts came to you and you was never supposed to engage these thoughts. You were supposed to cast them down. You were supposed to send them back to hell. To the gates of hell. So dishonor are thoughts that you refuse to cast down. You never dealt with it, confronted it correctly. You became a victim of something that you were supposed to use apostolic authority over. You got to keep on taking apostolic authority over vain imaginations. Dishonor is a thought that you refuse to cast down. That thought was supposed to be cast down by you. You never casted it down. Why do you think that people go into their workplace and talk to their boss any type of way? Or talk to someone that the boss spit over them a certain type of way? Or even talk to their co-workers a certain type of way? It's because of something that they had in their mind. Your thoughts. Your thoughts is either breathing Dishonor or honor 24-7. And God told you to cast down every vain imagination because these are the images that make you dishonorable. 
Dishonor does not pay you. Dishonor does not pay you. You don't go anywhere through dishonor. Dishonor just makes you stuck in the common world of nobodies. That's all dishonor does. It doesn't graduate you. It doesn't anoint you. It doesn't make you a woman. It doesn't make you a man. It does make you a fool. Dishonor, here's why I just heard the Lord say, dishonor is the fuel that makes you a fool. I never heard God say that. If you're taking notes, write that down. Dishonor is the fuel that makes you a fool. Dishonor is the fuel. And that's what Satan gash you up. He gash you up just to break you down. He gash you up just so that you can break down. He gash you up just so that you can remain empty. He gash you up just so that you will never make it to your destination. Dishonor is satanic gas, satanic fuel that breaks your vehicle down from entering into its destination. Honor our thoughts that you have to be unselfish to receive. Honor is thoughts that you have to be hungry from, from God, for God, hungry for God for you to embrace. Honor is the thoughts that you have to be teachable to, re, to, to receive. Honor is the thoughts that you have to be sanctified to embrace and to value. You cannot value honorable thoughts if you're not sanctified. If you're around fools, it's because you are fools. People that are friends with everybody are friends to nobody. People that connect with everybody are not connected to God. Every chosen vessel chooses who they let their self conversate with. Chosen vessels are not easy accessible. People are in the crowd because they're of the crowd. Dishonorable vessels have no boundaries. When you're an honorable vessel, God pits you on the straight and narrow path. If you divert, he corrects you. He confronts you. God's pathway is under heavy surveillance. Never forget this. If God ever lets you travel on the path that he wants you to travel... He's going to watch you like a hawk. And every bad move you make, he's going to confront you. And this is the Jesus that a lot of people don't know. He's not going to magnify your successes all the time. He's going to magnify your error. Oh, why didn't God see that I did all this? Why God always talking about what I didn't do? I done did all this. Stupid. How dumb. They say, John, I received the anointing of dumbness. I received the dumbness anointing. Why would God magnify your successes if he's perfecting you? The fact that you're successful there, it means that you don't need a confrontation. Why would he confront you on something that you're doing right? He confronts you on something that correction is God's anger for seeing error. Correction is not God's celebration of your successes. Did you catch that? Correction is not God celebrating your righteousness. It's God destroying the beginning of sin. That's what God does. If you take a note, write that down. Correction is God destroying the beginning of sin. 
the beginning of dishonor. Honest thoughts, dishonest thoughts. So control your mind. Honor shows you who never to argue with. Honor shows you who never to disrespect. Honor shows you who never to deny. Honor shows you who never to criticize, who never to gossip about. When you're in honor, the Holy Spirit will show you who never to pitch your mouth on, who never to have a bad report about. That's what honor does. Honor is God training you of how to never cause someone he sent to be your friend to be an enemy in your mind. You're not going to make it to heaven just solo. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah didn't like the idea. But Nineveh was going to validify his place in heaven. You'll never be in an island by yourself. God will always send you and pitch you around a person that can take you to heaven. And what you do for a person is what you're doing for God. If you do nothing for anybody, you will not enter into heaven. Honor is the beginning of servanthood, is the beginning of fruitfulness. When you start honoring God, that's when you start entering into the world of eternal life. And so for now on, you study which thoughts are coming to me. If the thoughts are coming to me to disrespect someone that God has put in my life is not from God. Don't be prophetic when it's time to be dumb. Be prophetic when it's time to be wise. Don't only hear God when it's time to do dumb stuff. You ever met people like that? They only hear God when it's time to do dumb stuff. You say, what the Lord say? Now nah, I can't hear the Lord. I don't even know what the Lord's saying to me. And, da, da, da. and then, then when it's time to do dumb stuff. Yeah, the Lord told me to slice the tires. Oh. You serve Dennis Rodman, huh? Dennis Rodman Christ, huh? Dennis Rodman Christ the third. You tell him, what's the word of the Lord? I don't, I don't know what the Lord telling me. I got to seek God. I got to seek God. Take his head off again. That's the Lord. The Lord told me it's time to take the head off. That's what the Lord told me. The Lord didn't tell you to take out that core team wig, did he? He didn't tell you to take out that quarantine wig. He didn't tell you. The Lord didn't tell you. The Lord didn't tell you to take, take a shower today, did it? He didn't tell you that, huh? The Lord didn't tell you to take no shower. He didn't tell you to let the soap hit you with the good Lord split you. That's what he didn't tell you to let the soap hit you with the good Lord split you. He didn't tell you none of that, huh? The Lord didn't tell you. The Lord didn't tell you that it's time for you to get some water on your skin. Just wash it. Just pat yourself down. You see, you did that for the cigarette, and I'll do it for you. Now, you did it for the cigarette. Now, do it for you. Honor always creates peacefulness. It makes you peaceful. It makes your man of God peaceful. Honor always creates peacefulness. It creates wholeness. You cannot be whole until you start honoring. Learn to honor and be set apart from others. Don't hang with people that's not honorable. Get far away from them. Get away from people that unlock the dummy in you. Never let yourself be corrupted by people that are not on their way to heaven. Choose the right thoughts, the thoughts that come from the Lord. Choose those thoughts mentally. Choose those thoughts constantly. And whatever you have to do to keep yourself. Now, let me just say this. 
You cannot honor until you have compassion for your man of God. Honor is when you look at your man of God from the eyes of God. Honor is when you avoid a fleshly reaction to a spiritual connection. Did you just catch what I just said? Honor is where you avoid a fleshly reaction to a spiritual connection. The Lord gets pleasure when you're honoring a man of God, when you're treating him correct. It takes a special person to know how to treat a man of God like a man of God. It takes a special person. No fool will ever know how to treat a man of God. No fool. Fools only know how to treat Elmo. <laughs> Brother Elmo. It is it, no issue with Brother Elmo. You, uh, Brother Elmo, you cook Brother Elmo pancakes. You cook Brother Elmo. You, 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 you rub bro, Brother Elmo feet. You, you, you try to try to lick Brother Elmo. Your tongue done fell off. You got coronavirus teeth. You got gum disease because you pitch your mouth on El Elmo. But knowing how to please your man of God is a supernatural grace. I received the grace to please my man of God, to love my man of God, to worship in spirit and in truth concerning my man of God. It's powerful. It's powerful. Do you know what worship means? Worship means to celebrate a God. Worship means to um, exalt someone over all your other focuses. So when God said, believe the prophet, what the Shunammite woman was exalt Elisha above everything. Her, her belly, her time. And then she asked her husband, can I... Can we put a place and, and make it just for Elisha? Elisha had consumed her mind to such a degree that she was eaten up inside to honor him. She did not want to live another day unless Elisha was blessed by her. She kept on sowing. The Shunammite woman kept on sowing. She wanted to sow everything she had to Elisha. But that was the mindset of honor. Honor makes you an ultimate giver. It makes you a radical sower. It makes you an unselfish, hospital, uh, 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 hospitable individual. Hospitality increases through honor. I received the anointing of honor. Your sewing account will expose your honor. It will, it will show how honorable you are. Your sewing account. When you're a person of honor, you'll be driven to constantly support your man of God. That's what honor does. Honor drives you to keep your man of God's vision alive. That's what honor does. Honor causes you to want to see Pleasure occur constantly to your man of God. That's what honor does. Honor is where God anoints you to bring your man of God pleasure. It's not hard to give a man of God pleasure. Be loyal. Many people don't understand that if a man of God is sent by God to you, that man of God does not want to hear about any other man of God. It's not that he hates any other man of God. But he's not that man of God. He's who God sent to you. So he does not want to hear about any other man of God. Loyalty is everything. If, if a man of God reveals something to you, don't reveal it to someone without consulting them. 
If that man of God does not give you permission to speak the information, you protect the information. Loyalty preserves divine relationships. It's not hard. If you see something that could jeopardize your man of God, don't keep it a secret. Don't say, oh, I have a prophet. Oh, I have a prophet. He knows all things, so I won't say anything. I think your middle name was a little retardation, little retardation. So it probably go like this, like uh, Jenkins, little retardation, Bill Group, Junior, the third. Probably will go like that. Um, uh, let's forget the... Uh, 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 Sharnice, Sharnay, Sharnay, and Little Rob Tardation, Little Rob Tardation, uh, Graham. All right. Don't say, oh, my man of God is a prophet and he knows all things. That's dishonor. If you know something that could jeopardize your man of God, and you say, oh, he's supernatural, it's, it's not going to bother him, he, he, it's not going to touch him. Is dishonor. Now I'm not saying that you go find people that blog and do stuff and say, oh, do you know, prophet, they're talking about you. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, if your man of God is doing something towards someone or doing something to, and that man of God needs the information. King Ahasuerus did not know that Haman was a devil. King Ahasuerus had exalted Haman. Mordecai knew secrets that protected the king from them killing him. Oh, do you understand? Huh? Mordecai was in honor. Honor seeks to protect your king. Honor makes you protective. People that don't protect their king are very dishonorable. You don't seek friendship with dishonorable people. Because guess what? Dishonorable people don't have any friends. It's just a matter of time before they dishonor you. Anybody that dishonors authority will dishonor you. You know, I've often met people before they said, uh, you know, my husband, you know, he and my husband, the all this stuff. My, 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 my grandfather did all this stuff. My mama did all this stuff to me. Oh, but did they pay your phone bill? They took care of you? Yeah, they took care of me, but that, that, but they did that, 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 that. Wow, well, I didn't pay your phone bill. So if you can talk about them and they paid your phone bill, blessed be God, who is me? So while you talking to me about them and they invested in you more than me, bye. Because <laughs> it's just a matter of time. You're going to talk about me because I ain't even make no investment. They, they made more investments than me and you still ain't got no loyalty to them. That's listen to people. If you think twice, you become a Christ. When we deal with wisdom, just think about it. Sometimes people be like, yeah, I went on a cruise. I went and yeah, da, 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 and while we was on the cruise, and da, da. like, wow, I never took you on a cruise. Huh? I never took you on a cruise. So they took you on a cruise and they're still evil to you? Wow. All right. So bye. We can't talk. Yeah, because I ain't take you on a cruise. So if I ain't take you on a cruise and you, you, you expect me to hold me, then nah, you're not. Honor will remind you of the good that someone has done for you. It will empower you to do good back to them. Honor will make you a harvest system to who has been sowing into you. Did you catch what I just said? Honor will make you a harvest system to whoever has been sowing into you. So if they have been sowing into you, they will become a harvest system. You'll become a harvest system to them rather. 